Hello my soccer universe, to review of what happened in match day 2 of the AFCON and I gotta say it's at the moment a wide open tournament uh, and that makes it really really exciting and also the quality has kicked up a notch for sure as well which makes it even more exciting if you were to ask me and yeah there are a few big nations that are really on the brink of el elimination I mean most of the North African teams as I almost expected have not been performing well uh, only Morocco and they just barely escaped yesterday uh, they are sitting on four points but we have Algeria still only on two points we have uh, Egypt still only on two points and having to play the inform team coming up in Cape Verde uh, also on the brink uh, we have of course um, Tunisia sitting last in the group and not looking good and I think their chances of advancing is also not quite uh, positive one has to say so those four are already kind of hanging in, in there but then we have the host uh, Cote d'Ivoire suddenly losing at, at home to Nigeria and facing a really tough opponent in their last match with Equatorial Guinea mm hmm probably finishing second but not looking good at all Cameroon also on the brink of being eliminated and the same thing goes for Ghana so a whole lot of big nations are on their way at least to a third place finish and barely squeaking into uh, the uh, knockout stage but then we have the real uh, surprises of this tournament which there are of course Equatorial Guinea performing really really well sitting top of the group Cape Verde have to be the story of the tournament so far the only one of only two teams to have six points Senegal sitting okay uh, looking good I think Angola is performing outperforming themselves also we have now uh, we had a good story with Namibia but uh, they are losing now to South Africa in the derby so South Africa is also showing some signs of life it's really exciting it's really really exciting and I don't know where this last uh, phase will leave us and how the bracket will set up we had major changes again the expected standings flip-flopping after every round that makes it really exciting this is a really really good tournament at the moment and I heard even that um, uncharacteristic for the AFCON the pitches are also in really good condition which makes for the great um, action on the field as well so have that in mind but yeah so far the only perfect teams Senegal that is kind of expected they are the holders and probably still the favorites uh, to win it although everyone says Morocco but Morocco have shown some chinks in the armor and Cape Verde Islands which yeah that is probably coming as a surprise a little bit I would say let's go a little bit game by game what has happened and we'll start with Equatorial Guinea taking um, uh, Guin on Guinea Bissau to kind of restart this round uh, and running away with 4-2 uh, as 4 to win it. yes it was 1-1 one, one to have Guinea Bissau get a goal uh, it, was, it was an on, on, on goal but in the end it's an, a 4-2 uh, it's a 4 two. Nsue scoring a hat-trick uh, in the process but the big one was was of course Cote d'Ivoire facing Nigeria this was probably one of the biggest games ahead of the tournament that everyone had, had, had circled and uh, with the win of Equatorial Guinea it was kind of uh, the Cote d'Ivoire could not afford really to lose and also Nigeria whoever loses here is in a much worse position suddenly and that was heavy on the game yes we had a little bit of a wild opening phase where especially um, Ozeman had a pretty good chance to score but it was on both sides there was also um, a post by Nigeria in there but overall the game then kind of slowed down because no one wanted to take the risk um, and then it gets decided Nigeria needed of course more of the win they go forward uh, Osiman is brought down with one of those panel panels it, the player doesn't want to hit Osiman he wants to hit, hit hit the ball but doesn't get to the ball because Osiman gets there first and then hits the ball. okay it's a penalty now I think this was not something that would have, would have given a long time ago however the penalty is given and Troste Kong steps up and makes it 1-0 Nigeria and credit where, uh, where credit is due we all marveled at the offensive prowess that Nigeria has however this time they really hung in deep and defended well there was barely a chance for the Cote d'Ivoire to was it? I thought it was more going 2-0 Nigeria than it was uh, that the Cote d'Ivoire will get an equalizer in this game and that puts Nigeria in a good good position Cote d'Ivoire not in a bad one either because even as a third place team I think they will probably go through but it's not good for the overall mood of the tour tournament if the hosts 
are not safely through. So we'll see uh, already today how they will perform. And then after this, a little bit down again, although very interesting, uh, we had a real wild one between Egypt and Ghana. Uh, the big story happened before all the scoring came is that uh, Mohamed Salah with a, a slight hamstring injury having to come off. And suddenly Egypt drops down uh, in uh, the overall perception of who is a favorite or not. Um, and then to add insult to injury, a minute after he, he came off, Mohamed Kudus gives Ghana the lead and it's 1-0. And Ghana actually really tried to give it, give, 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 give the all in this one, uh, but Egypt came back in the second half. Abdel Monem seemingly had gotten an equalizer, was chalked off for an offside. Marmush then gets the equalizer after trying a whole lot. 69th minute. However, Mohamed Kuz almost immediately re-establishes the lead for Ghana, but only a couple of minutes later, Mustafa Mohamed gets an equalizer for Egypt, who were then pressing. It was a really open, fun game to watch. Wild, and the draw doesn't really help either one of, of them to boost as well. And then uh, Cape Verde actually win the group with a 3-0 over Mozambique. And of course, the story was Bebe, who already had one shot uh, from Farah taken onto the body and he takes a free kick from 40 meters out. I mean, the, it's worth cra crazy. The goal it did not look well, but still, convert the free kick from 40 meters out. That sh should so tell it all. And then they run away 3-0 meters with Mendes and Lenini uh, bagging the win. As I said, Cape Verde win this group, will for sure be in first place. And that's already a so surprise. So while uh, Ghana and Egypt, one of them may not make it, although Mozambique surely is the weakest team in the, the group that should finish last. Uh, another big game was, of course, Senegal against Cameroon, although that pretty much had um, the favorite was more or less Senegal. I mean, everyone knew that. Uh, Onana is back in the Cameroon goal and Dooley makes a mistake where he gives the, a, ball, a ball to Papsar, more or less, who then plays on uh, Ismail Sar, who takes a shot from uh, far, far out. It's 1-0 for Senegal in the 16th minute. Senegal being in good control again. The there was really not much happening for Cameroon. Uh, and when Diallo, after another Ismail Sar assist, makes it 2-0, just taking the ball before Sergio Mane, I thought the game is done. However, um, Cameron coach, um, name is not coming now, <laughs> but <laughs> Rigo Petzog, here, there, there, there it is, brings on a few uh, of, of players like Njam and uh, Mumbanya, Njam then Estesis Castelletto, uh, who pulls her back and suddenly cover her back in the game. And they're pressing, and Senegal look a little bit nervy. Yes, they have some car, car counter attacks, but uh, Cameron, I think, hit at least the post. And before uh, Mane, after Idrissa Gay assist, makes it 3-1, there were some nervy moments in there. But again, Senegal also 6 points. And then to make matters worse for Cameron, uh, Guinea beats Gam the Gambia by 1-0. And are also looking very good in, it, in advancing. And I would say Guinea is an overlooked uh, team at the Africa Cup because they can do some stuff. And they're usually very interesting kids uh, with uh, red, yellow, green. Always love to see that. Then uh, another crazy one uh, between Algeria and Burkina Faso. Uh, Burkina Faso is a team that I think is not as good as their results are, but they get the goals. Um, they were the better team in the first half and score very late on when I top so, but deep ball uh, finds Konate who basically jumps in, ma makes a jumping header. Uh, to make it 1-0. It was initially called offside. It was very well onside. However, um, the lifeline for Algeria has to be Bagdad Bunaja. He has been scoring the win of in the AFCON final in 2019 uh, and has been uh, keeping up the goals. It was also the goals, goal scorer in the first game uh, against Angola. He gets an equalizer, but then uh, a little bit later on um, um, Burkina Faso is awarded a penalty. And for the penalty, uh, the coach takes off Con 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 Conte, brings on Bertrand Diatraoré, who also scored, scored the winner uh, in the first game for Burkina Faso. And he puts Burkina Faso back into the lead. And actually, at that point, everyone thought, and wild, uh, wild scenes, because there's a lot of uh, Burkina Bay uh, visiting there, and they truly have a home field advantage, I have to say there. Um, 
It's also not too far away from the Cote d'Ivoire to, to, to the worst, but uh, Burkina Faso seems to be well on the way, but then Punija against Neches and Equalizer keeps Algeria just alive. Remember, just two years ago, Algeria had a huge favorite in, the, in this tournament and left the group stage, I think, without even scoring a goal in last place. So there's really make up territory there. This is a stacked Algeria team. And again, being on the out. More or less, out, 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 out of the another wild one then, Angola puts pressure on Algeria with a 3-2 win over Mauritania, who end the goal-scoring drought at the AFCON. Um, it was uh, Dala uh, pulling Alge uh, Angola, I'm getting all messed up, in the lead, uh, but Mauritania really was playing progressively looking forward a mark as an equal as a wild cell celebrations however maybe they felt too big uh, too big because Dala and Gilberto make it 3-1 by the 53rd minute but when Coeta pulls one back 3-2 uh, but uh, Mauritania cannot find an equal as a big win for Angola and then Tunisia against Mala Mali is always Brilliant jerseys in both cases. Uh, maybe we'll see in the AFCON review, but I love uh, this jersey matchup per se or, or, or already. And I think Tunisia got away with one here. Uh, Sinayoko put Mali early in the lead. Uh, Rafia gets 10 minutes later an e e equalizer, but the longer the game went, the more Tunisia went back. Uh, and Mali was threatening. Not much, but work much closer to uh, the winner, especially with a free kick that just missed uh, the goal late on. They could have had have, have, have probably qualified themselves. Also, you have to know Tunisia and Mali is like uh, they are always playing each other. And this is the third African in a row. They played for uh, space at the World Cup. So there's a whole lot of history between those two teams. They spare the spoils, uh, they share the spoils there. Then Morocco. Also, yes, Hakimi gave them an early, early lead, but the DRC was really close of getting a win. They missed a the penalty in the four for the second minute. Then, when you thought that Morocco have this game kind of under control, Silas pulls off an equalizer. That's the guy from Stuttgart, and it probably could have been more in, in the end. It's only a 1-1, one, one, and Morocco were a little bit lucky on that one. Zambia and Tanzania uh, play out a 1-1 one, one draw, a late, late, late equalizer of Papatzen Daka in the 88th minute, but also notable that the Tanzania coach uh, called the federation uh, people, all co uh, they are super, super corrupt, duly fired, of course. Uh, but you know, that's the high, that's de definitely the highlight. And then we all had high hopes uh, after Namibia, who had beaten Tunisia in the first round, Facing South Africa, South Africa team that had lost uh, to Mali. A little bit unlucky because, you know, Percy Tau missed the penalty. Well, he made up for it by getting a penalty. I have to say the early stages belonged to Namibia in there at that one, but then the penalty for South Africa is given. And from that moment on, South Africa was in very good, good control. Swane scoring two more, and then very late on, uh, Maseko makes a four. And this was a comprehensive win for South Africa. And maybe we have been overlooking the South African team. Uh, would be fun to see them actually rise up a little bit because to me South Africa should be a much bigger power in Africa than they actually are and there are many reasons for that that they are not but yeah they win the Derby neighboring duel expectedly I mean if you see the two nations Namibia is maybe as big as South Africa if not uh, slightly bigger but have just a tenth of the people living there so there you, there you go, and that is also reflective of the results. So let's look at the overall standings. We have Nigeria, more or less through, um, because they will play Guinea-Bissau, where they are expected to, of course, win. Ecuador, Guinea, and Cote d'Ivoire, both looking relatively safe, going through maybe a draw between those two. We'll do it for them. Cape Verde have won the group. Uh, it's Egypt, Ghana, Mozambique. One of those two will have to play for second place. Uh, we have Egypt playing the Cup Verde, so Ghana have slightly the better inside track, one would say. Senegal through, Guinea more or less through, Cameroon need to battle. Cameroon, as we have, have to play the Gambia, so you would get, think they will get the three points there. Senegal uh, will need a point against Guinea for sure. Angola looking pretty up top, but Burkina Faso um, having the easier route. No, not having the easier route. We will see. They have to, have to play against Angola as, as as well. But Burkina Faso looking good. Algeria more Mauritania 
probably Algeria will sneak through. Uh, if we see the Mali in control of their group, South Africa will be ahead of Tunisia. Tunisia not looking good. Not looking good at all. Having to play a South Africa team that is on the rise. And then Morocco and the DRC will probably make it through Zambia, Tanzania. Let's see it. You also see that in the expected third place standings. I mean, at the current sort of third place in Ghana and Cameroon, who are third place teams, would be out. Um, Cameroon is expected to just make it in because of the nice matchup coming. Uh, but Ghana better get a win otherwise you're out and that i think is also really exciting as well to see that it's not not a done deal um if we look at the overall bracket and we saw expectedly equatorial guinea who have to play the uh Cote will probably finish in third place i'm not quite sure about that and if they would have to play senegal on the very bottom this would not be an easy uh, fixture for sure for the Senegalese. Uh, I also want to point out before we go a little deeper, um, we had initially A2 against C2, it was always Nigeria against Cameroon. We have that now again expected, but a little bit lower in, 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 in the bracket, which I find kind of uh, in, interesting. What we see is that even if the Cote d'Ivoire should finish second, uh, it doesn't really hurt their chances because the bracket is then panning out quite nicely for them with Burkina Faso, the top seeded team, if you will, would like. A team that I think the Cote d'Ivoire could well beat. Uh, we see Cape Verde having to play Algeria. Uh, that, I think at the last AFCON they beat them, so that would be interesting. Them facing the winner of Morocco, South Africa. Um, Morocco is of course the big favorite, but I could see upsets happening there. I could also see Morocco making it easy to the same as facing a court. The Wawa actually would fa uh, favor the hosts at this moment, although do I? Maybe I don't. That will be interesting. But it seems like the upper bracket is a little bit lighter overall. On the bottom, Egypt DRC should, if this was happening, would, would be a rather even ma matchup. Nigeria Cameroon is a classic. Mali, Angola, hmm, another nice jersey match with Senegal, Ecuador, Guinea. So, uh, gotta see where this is going. At the moment, it says Egypt against Senegal, semis, replay of the final. Uh, that, that will be interesting. And of course, still Morocco against Senegal in the final, but nothing's for certain for now. I already hinted a little bit at uh, the favorites. Morocco is still the favorite. Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, Algeria, Egypt. Nigeria, Mali. I honestly think the North African teams we have to uh, pack down a little bit, I feel. But uh, so far in their rating, they're still high up there. And I already said a little bit about the upcoming games. Uh, we have a big one, Ecuador, Guinea, Cocodero already tonight. Uh, we also have Cape Verde against Egypt. I think those are two games to watch. Um, then the question is, will Cameroon uh, move on? Senegal and Guinea also playing there. Could come down to gold, the, the difference. Uh, Algeria will need the win against Mori Mauritania and Angola Burkina Faso. It's also quite an interesting game as is South Africa against Tunisia, if you ask me. And Morocco probably will get the points against Zambia. We will see each other after all these games again. I will duly make a video on these and then we'll see how the bracket actually panned out. In the meantime, let me know how you like the FCON so far. If you've been watching, as I said, a wide open competition, let me know who you think will win it. Uh, will Morocco come through or will it be Senegal repeating or someone completely different? That is for me the big question. In any case, I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!